Adobe Lightroom has many useful features, some of which are easy to find, easy to use, easy to understand. However, it also has some lesser known features that can be absolute game changers when it comes to photo editing. In this video, we're gonna be covering 15 of those lesser known Lightroom tips that you can use when you're editing your photos. For those of you that are new here, what's up? My name is Sean, I'm a travel photographer and I put out weekly videos to help you become a better photographer. So if you're new here, what's up? Welcome to the channel, we're happy to have you here. And if you're interested in becoming a better photographer, please consider subscribing. Also, if you haven't checked it out already, I'm giving away a free orange and teal preset pack for desktop and mobile. The link is in the description. You can just head to my website, download those, super easy to install on your desktop or your mobile phone. And those are for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and download those. But all right, with that stuff out of the way, it is finally time to dive into these 15 lesser known Lightroom tips. So let's start at number one, which is solo mode. Solo mode is a really awesome tool that basically allows us to only have one of the develop panels open at a time. And it just keeps things nice and clean. So you can see whenever I open one of these other develop panels, the other ones close. And you can enable this by just right clicking any of the develop panels and click solo mode. And that will allow you to keep them all closed. If you don't like that, if you wanna have them all open, you can just disable that and uh, work, th work your way down. Personally, I think it keeps it a lot cleaner and a lot easier to navigate when I turn solo mode on. So that's just a great tip for keeping things nice and organized. The second tip I have for you guys is to optimize your catalog. If you're using Lightroom for a while, things are gonna start to slow down. That's just the nature of the game. That's how it works. So what you can do is you can optimize your catalog and you can do that by going to file and then optimize catalog. It'll tell you the last time you optimized and then you just click optimize. It might take a few minutes. And what this is basically doing is just cleaning out old files and speeding everything up. So this is a really good way to help speed up Lightroom. And I recommend doing this every few weeks, especially if you have a really large library. The next tip I have for you guys, which is honestly, if you take one thing away from this video, it should be this because this is the ultimate Lightroom hack. And that is the Alt slash Option key, Alt for Windows and Option for Mac. The Alt slash Option key can be used in so many different ways within Lightroom. In most situations, it's gonna bring up a alternate view that will allow you to make adjustments in a slightly different way. So for example, if I'm editing the basic adjustments here, I go through all my basic adjustments, okay, they're good. If I hold Option, I'm on a Mac, it'll give me the option to essentially reset all the tones. Another really cool thing it does is if I'm adjusting exposure and I hold Option, if I get to a certain point, it'll show me which areas are clipping, which means that that area is devoid of all information, which is, we don't want that. So that is a really cool feature. You can also use it when you're split turning, you can hold option and scroll through the various colors and it will show you what 100% saturation of that color looks like. And then you can release and then just increase the saturation to where you want it. You can use it to mask in your sharpening. So say you sharpen at 55, but you want it to be in a specific area. You can hold option or alt and drag the masking up and that will basically show you which areas are gonna be sharp. The white areas is where the sharpening is going to be applied and the black areas is where it's not going to be applied. You can also use it in the tone curve. So the tone curve moves around quite quickly. If you hold option, it'll slow it down so you can fine tune it. And that is really helpful as well. Honestly, the alt and option key can be used in so many different situations within Adobe Lightroom. So whatever you guys are adjusting, try holding the alt or option key and see what that does. It's gonna bring up an alternate view or an optional view. And that is really going to change the editing game. And it's a really useful tool. So if there's one thing you should take away from this video, it is that the alt slash option key is super, super useful in Adobe Lightroom. The next tip is to create virtual copies. If you guys have seen any of my courses, you know that I always recommend editing a photo in multiple different styles. This is great because you can see what all the different edits are gonna look like right next to each other. What you can do is simply right click any image and then select create virtual copy. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create an actual virtual copy. You can edit those photos right next to each other and see the different effects. So that's a really cool feature and I definitely recommend editing a photo in multiple different ways to see which one you like the best. The next tip is super useful and that is using the backslash key or the Y key to see the before and after versions of your edit. So I can hit the backslash key and it'll toggle between the before and after or I can hit the Y key and it'll put it right next to it so I can see my adjustments straight right there, nice and easy. And that's a really good feature when you're editing so you can just see how far you've come, see the changes you've made, see if you've maybe over edited your photo. This is a really good tip. Next up is color profiles. And if you're shooting in raw, which you should be, Adobe will detect the camera that you're using and it will give you various options 
for different color profiles that are gonna change the look of your image. So if you see here in the basic adjustments panel, there's a few here, Adobe Color, Landscape, Portrait, etc. But if you click these boxes here, it'll have a lot more available to you and you can just scroll through and find the one that you think is the best. The camera matching is great. What it's gonna do is detect the camera that you're using and it's gonna give you various color profiles that you can work off of. So for example, if I use camera portrait, well, that looks a lot different than the original Adobe standard. Um, and then you can just build your edit off of these. So this is only gonna work if you have a raw photo. If you have a JPEG, the options are a lot more limited. I think you'll be able to use the artistic options down here. So I definitely recommend checking out the profile browser, going through and messing around with the different profiles to see which one looks the best on your image. The next tip I have for you guys is the targeted color adjustment. This is super, super useful if you're editing something like skin tones or there's just different colors in your image that you wanna edit, but you're having a hard time isolating them. You can go to the HSL sliders here for hue, saturation, or luminance, any of them. You can select this little target here and then go to your image and find an area that you'd like to sample, click and hold, and then you can drag up or down and it's going to basically edit all of the colors in the area that you're sampling. So right now we're sampling her skin. It's adjusting mostly orange, but also red a little bit because her skin is mostly orange, but it's also red. This is really, really great for nailing in your skin tones. You can also use this for backgrounds. Say if I don't want that green back there, I can kind of mess with it, make it more blue or make it more yellow or orange. So really cool feature to really fine tune the colors in your image. And I definitely recommend doing this. You can also do this if your photo is black and white. So if I hit V and make my photo black and white, this black and white mix is going to come up. And essentially what it's doing is it's editing the luminance of the colors. The colors are still in the image because we've digitally made it black and white. So if I sample her skin and drag up and down, it's going to affect the luminance of that orange because her skin is orange. If I do the sand, uh, the sand is mostly blue, so you see what it's gonna do there. So really powerful tool for black and white and color editing, and I definitely recommend using this feature, especially if you're editing something like skin tones. The next tip I have for you guys is such an overlooked tip, and that is the auto mask slash range mask tools. So whenever you're making a selection, it can be difficult to get the selection exactly where you want it. When you're using the paintbrush, there's a really cool tool called the auto mask which essentially is going to look at the contrast and the colors, and it's going to basically apply your mask in a very smart way based on those things. So if I create a mask here, I'm gonna hit O so I can see my colors and where I'm affecting. I have auto mask turned on here, and it's just gonna help me kind of not go over the lines and just keep things where it thinks it should be. Uh, this is great, especially if you're, if you're doing faces or something where you know, you just want it to be very exact. This is an awesome feature to making sure you don't kind of go over their eyes and do a bunch of bad stuff. If you go straight over their eye, it's gonna do it, but it does really reduce in air. Another really cool feature other than the auto mask is the range mask feature. And the range mask feature can be used with the brush, the radio filter or the graduated filter. So any of these selective adjustments. And essentially what it does is it allows you to create a more exact selection. So if I create a radio filter here and I wanna select her, if I invert it, well, it's gonna be over this whole bottom of the area. If I turn on the range mask and I select color, I can then click this little dropper here and then select her skin. And it's only gonna make the selection of the colors within this area. Because there's no orange or yellow in this sand right here, it's only gonna be affecting her body. And then we have an awesome selection just like that and we can edit her skin just like that. So that's a really, really cool feature that I see most photographers not using and it's actually a complete game changer when you're trying to make selections that are really spot on. Another really awesome tool related to the selective adjustments is the localized hue adjustment. Now, once we have a selection, we can actually adjust the hues of the color in that area. So we've already made a selection using the color range mask here. So then I can just drag and it's going to change the hue of her skin. This is a really, really cool feature and you can get some crazy combinations. Like we can turn her into a Smurf if we make it blue uh, and we can just mess with the colors. Obviously we wanna keep it natural, but we really do have a lot more control over colors in very select parts of our image using this feature. And it's a really awesome and overlooked feature that I think you should definitely check out. Keeping up with the localized adjustments here, the next tip is to use some of the brush presets, the default presets built in to make sure 
the skin in your photo is nice and where you want it to. So for example, if I create a new brush here, I can go to effect and I can scroll down to soften skin. And then I can go ahead and paint over her skin and it's gonna soften her skin and it does a really good job. You don't need to use Photoshop to edit skin. You can actually do quite a bit within Lightroom and this does a really good job. Default presets are really cool. They even have like burning and dodging. So you can hit here, you can hit burn and then you can just select different parts of your image and make it darker. So definitely recommend checking out the default preset brushes. They're often overlooked, but they're really, really useful when editing things like portraits. Next up is to use the transform feature to stretch or alter your perspectives uh, to make it look a little bit better. So for example, you can actually stretch mountains and make them look taller by bringing down the vertical and that's gonna stretch that mountain and make it taller. You can also do it the other way. So you can just play around with this and make your landscapes a little bit crazy. Don't go too far with this, but it is a really cool feature. Uh, and then say for example, you're shooting a flat lay and you're trying to shoot straight down, uh, but the camera was slightly twisted. Your perspective is gonna be off if that's the case. So what you can do is come in here and mess with the horizontal and vertical transform tools to make sure you just dial in that perspective so it's nice and straight down. So the transform tool is so often overlooked, but it's a really awesome tool that you should be using if you're trying to fix your perspective and correct it a little bit. Next up is batch editing with the synchronization tool. This is a really good way to edit multiple photos at once. You can edit hundreds of photos at once. I've done this when I'm editing for like events or weddings where I just have a ton of different images that I need to edit. What you can do is just edit one of them. So for example, we'll just apply my Halloween preset on this one. We'll do some basic exposure adjustments here to make sure it looks good. And then what we can do is just select all the different images from the same scene hit sync, select the adjustments that we wanna copy and synchronize, and it's gonna edit all of these images using those same adjustments. But synchronization doesn't take into account variations in exposure. And that leads me on to my next point, which is using the match exposure tool to make sure all your images have the same exposure. So for this, how it works is if you have a bunch of different photos and they were shot at slightly different exposures, what you can do is go ahead and increase the exposure, get the exposure right where you want it in one of the images, and then you can go and select all the other images, go to settings, and then select match total exposure. And what it'll do is look at the exposure adjustments that you made and then look at the brightness levels of all the other images and make exposure adjustments based on how dark or how bright those photos are. So it's gonna be different with every photo. With this image, I made it plus 90 for the exposure adjustment. But if I click over here on some of these other images, so for this one, it only made it plus 58. It automatically adjusted based on how bright or how dark that scene is. So this works really well with the synchronized settings. Synchronized, like I said, it doesn't take into account the brightness of the images. So what you can do is edit one photo, copy those edits across all the other images, and then go back dial in the exposure on the first image and then match the total exposure. And then you have two to 300 photos that are done and ready to go. So this can save you so much time and I highly recommend checking out this feature. We're almost done here, but there are a few more useful tips. And this next tip is that you can actually use a brush to adjust your graduated and radio filters. So say for example, I want to create a radio filter and darken the bottom here. That's something I often do, but I don't want it to affect her. What I can do here is go to brush and then that is going to allow me to either add or subtract if I click erase that gradial filter. So what I'm gonna do is just click erase and just paint over her and that's just gonna erase our mask in that area. So we still keep the whole bottom dark except for her because I don't want her to be dark. So that's a really cool feature. And last but certainly not least is the ability to update presets with current settings. So many of us use presets, presets are awesome. They're a really good way to speed up your editing workflow and get the artistic look that you want. But sometimes when we buy a set of presets and we apply them to our photos, we have to make quite a few changes to that image. And then every time we apply that preset in the future, we have to make those same adjustments. That doesn't always make sense. So what we can do is we can apply a preset, say we apply falling leaves here, we go through and we make our basic adjustments to get it right where we want it to be. Then what we can do is just right click that preset that we applied it to 
and then select update with current settings. And what that's gonna do is just update that preset with the other adjustments that you've made. Uh, and then when you apply that preset to other photos in the future, you're not gonna have to go through and make those same exact changes that you made the first time. So that is a really useful tip for everybody using presets and I highly recommend trying that out. But that is about it guys. Those are 15 of some of the lesser known tips that I use on almost a daily basis when I'm editing my photos. And they can actually be really, really beneficial for helping you become a better photo editor. But now I wanna hear from you guys. Do you guys have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share? Go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what those are. Also, once again, if you guys are new here, thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I'm super happy that you're here. And if you guys enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. I release weekly videos every single Friday. And those videos are always about photography, photo editing, videography, everything related to that. And then I'm also putting out other weekly videos such as vlogs and other various content that I think you guys will enjoy. But that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.